What's up guys, Cass here from Giveaway Studios and on this one I'm going to show you guys how to turn all of the pieces that you see here into this awesome great eagle bow from Breath of the Wild which is one of the champion weapons that Rivali uses in game complete with lights that turn on and off and magnetically detachable parts so that it is easy to take apart and travel with so that you can take it to any con with minimal chances of it getting crushed or messed up. Let's get it. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is organize my pieces. Okay, for the most part, this is what your layout should look like. So we're gonna start with some of the more simple pieces and move on to some of the more complex stuff. And I'll just go bit by bit and explain how the parts go together. So let's grab these guys. Okay, so nothing too complicated here. You should have four of these pieces. If you have the uh, DIY kit, uh, if you bought the patterns, just cut your parts out, uh, punch your holes out to what you need to do to try and make it look as close to this as possible. And fairly simple, we're just going to glue these together to create a thicker sprocket, basically. So this one's glued together already, as you can see. So just line up the holes, glue it together, and I'll catch you guys for the next time. Okay, while I wait for these to dry a little bit, we're gonna move on to this guy. Okay, so there are three middle pieces here that are smaller than the outer ones clearly the outer ones have the patterns now with this um, if you guys got the patterns um, and you maybe don't have a, a tool to like burn this detail in you can also make this detail pop off of the piece by making these into uh, two millimeter strips and adding them uh, to the outside for this extra detail okay so if you if you don't have the laser cut uh, set DIY kit you can still do this detail and then on the inside of this I'm gonna pull this apart and show you guys uh, on your pattern there is let me organize this on your pattern there are these dash lines to show you guys this cut out here so this uh, you can do this also if you wish to um, add a light inside of here. So as you can see, I have a little battery pack. I'm gonna attach some LEDs on here. And then um, for my tube, because uh, if you look at the reference image, he has like a bunch of tubes sticking out. I will have LEDs at the tip of them. So I wanna be able to run lights inside of this. So if we look at this part here, all right? So I have my light. This is the path that the wire will follow, go into the tube and uh, we'll have an LED at the end there. But if you don't want to do that, that's fine. Just use three of these pieces, stack them together. Once you've stacked those together, um, glue these also to the outside, like so, and just make sure that everything lines up on the edge, nice and equal, and then uh, that's it for this guy. So you need two of those, so uh, I will also just Show you guys this which is the outer arm of the bow so now this is only three parts that come together uh, again very symmetrical to each other except for the middle one that has uh, this kind of like circular cutout here and what this is for is the gear so once we assemble this that's where the gear is going to go and these dots these are 10 millimeter circles are there so that the gear can turn um, if you want it to be that way. If you don't want it to be that way, you can just glue it directly to this. All up to you. My uh, instructions are merely guidelines. It's a DIY kit for a reason, so you guys be as creative as you want with it. Uh, you can stray from the path or follow exactly how it is that I do mine. Okay, so fairly simple assembly. Uh, so I'm just going to fast forward through the process for all of these and move on to the next. So if you are adding lights and you have made these cuts to make sure that when you go put it down, um, you just use your cutout parts 
so you can trace on to where the glue is going to be. That way you leave the um, open area as free from any glue as possible, just uh, so as to not to interfere with how smooth your wire or your lights go in uh, through that path, okay? two of these that's what this stuff should look like and again if you didn't want to put lights you're not going to have these holes you're just going to have three parts in the middle all right all right so all of our big pieces are assembled we have the arm here so this is kind of what it ends up looking like as you can see it slots in between these two openings here it slides right in so I'm gonna do a little bit of cleanup. I don't know if you guys can tell, but if you did get the laser cut DIY kit, you'll notice that it's pretty rough on the edges and that's just a byproduct of the foam being laser cut. Um, but you can go ahead and sand it down smooth, as you can see, like I did here. So you can see, barely see the seams. It's nice and smooth to the touch. We'll accept paint quite nicely once we um, heat seal and plastic dip everything. Um, or you could grab a two millimeter uh, foam strip about the same width as this and just kind of uh, run run your strip all the way down the top if you want to hide your seams. Uh, for example, for those of you who have the pattern and have cut out your own shapes. Okay, so I'll skip that step and um, I'll start prepping some other stuff for now. So you'll also receive these pieces. Um, I kind of um, got a little uh, overzealous and started putting them together without recording the process, but they're fairly simple to put together. So I'll just explain it real quick. So this is the bottom piece and this is the top piece. And how these work is if you look at your patterns, okay, so like right here, whatever your Whatever surface you decide to be your outside, okay, go ahead and put that on the top. So this is going to be the outside. So this is my left, right? And then I'm going to grab a nice sharp blade. So I have an example here so I can show you guys. So as you can see, okay, it's a pretty flat surface. I just did my regular cuts here. And so what I'm going to do is cut these at an angle. You could do like a 45. Uh, anywhere between 45 and 35 will do. So I have my piece down, have my blade at an angle, I'm slicing right up against the edge. Okay, and now if you take a look at it, I kind of have an angle going this way. And we can compare the two. If I fold this over, you guys can see this is flat, this is more angled. Okay, so you want to do all of these all of these sides at that same angle. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn this over again with the side, cut that at an angle, and there you have it. And once you've done this, just heat your foam. Okay, and with anything circular that you have, it could be your elbow, your knee, uh, a soda bottle or something, I have my little rounded anvil here that I'll use for this. And just give it a nice curved shape. And then when you're done, right? obviously with both sides, you're just gonna glue the outer angled edges to each other, like so and like so, which is going to give you this piece, okay? And then this shape, you're going to do the exact same thing. You can see where these lines are. So you're gonna have the 45 degree here, the 45 degree here, glue them together, and you're gonna have this shape. And as you can see, they have different openings. So this one with the smaller opening is on the outside. This is on the inside. And so you can look at a reference of Rivali's bow and figure out you know, how much of a flare you want, how much um, you want one to go in more or out more. That's one of those things that really uh, is up to you. And once you've figured out your lines, obviously just trace them so you know where they go. And then this is gonna go in here, like so. 
Okay. And here is another, uh, this is another opportunity for you to decide what angle you're giving this. So obviously this is at a more acute angle. This is a little bit more straight, but again, it's just going to depend on you on how much of an angle you want to see on this. Okay. And that's how you put these pieces together. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through the steps of sanding everything. Okay, so I don't know if you guys can tell from the video, but I've also taken the opportunity to just kind of smooth out my edges. If you can see here, it's pretty linear as opposed to here, it's a much softer edge. So that's something that you can do also. Okay, so next up we're gonna add our little uh, five millimeter details to the tip of the arm here. Okay, with these. So you're gonna glue these in place, left and right. Once you're done with that, you're gonna grab uh, these rectangle strips. You're gonna glue from the bottom here, all the way around until it reaches the other end. And then you can sand and bevel the edges to do that golden cap that happens here. So I'll fast forward through those steps, catch you guys for the next one. Okay, and just to slow it down a little bit to show you guys what I'm doing, I'll go ahead and grab my piece. Um, if you guys can't tell, I kind of tapered this a little bit, so that's an extra little detail that you can do if you want to, you don't have to, but uh, I like taking things step further than I need to most of the time. I just overcomplicate stuff for myself. So I'm just lining up the piece with the edge as best as I can. And then when I turn it over here, I'm gonna try to attach the end first. That way if there's any excess in the middle, I can just kind of squeegee it into place uh, and force the foam to just kind of take over the rest of the space. That way I know that this is nice and clean on the edge there and nice and clean on the top edge there. Okay, so now this is super angular so I'm just going to go ahead and sand this down with a rotary tool to get it a little bit more round. Okay, and just for reference you guys can see I went from this to this much smoother edges Okay. and not as rough. Again, this is not something that you necessarily have to do, uh, but just showing you guys um, how much of a, a difference it actually makes, um, just taking it a step further and doing some little detail finishing touches like this. Okay, So in a game, this is a detail that you can't see, but in the art book, there are some lines here. Uh, again, one of those details that you don't have to add if you don't want to. I'm going to go ahead and add them. And basically they just follow the shape of this. So I'm going to draw some lines right next to this, following the general shape. And then I'm going to use my X-Acto knife to score these guys uh, and open them up. So I can add that little bit of detail before we uh, start sealing the foam. All right, something like that, all the way around. And with a good sharp blade, I'm gonna go ahead and dive my blade in there by like, I don't know, a millimeter or two. Uh, obviously you don't wanna cut all the way through the foam, so just be mindful as you're going through this. And do try to do it all in one stroke so that you don't have like overlapping lines and then it looks like an accident more than something intentional. Okay. And make sure to start your cut at the bottom. That way, if you do make a mistake in overlapping them, it's not seen. So, I'm just going to grab my heat gun, heat this up. And I'm pretty sure you guys can see the transformation. Uh, do be sure that after you've heat this up, you go right back in and uh, push your seams together as the glue just might have loosened them up a little bit. 
and now we have a nice detail around the edge there and you can see the difference here is just the pen mark and now it's nice and open and this is going to last through however many layers of paint we put on top okay, and take advantage of this fact and just start heat sealing the entire surface you guys can always tell when the foam has been sealed see how it's nice and shiny here but it's still matte over there so that's really all you want you don't want to stay in one area for too long in order not to burn the foam all right nice heat sealed piece and i'm just going to do that for the other one So you have uh, a bunch of these little feathery pieces, obviously there's one big one with the big circle there uh, for the gear to go over and there's the smaller ones that go on either the left and right side of the top arm piece there. Uh, both of these again in game don't really have a lot of detail on them but in the art book uh, there are a couple of lines that do exist on this. So. What I'm going to do is just kind of show you what they look like. I'm just going to freestyle the lines. Um, so this one, just kind of do one false swoop. And these ones just kind of follow the curvature of the existing shape here, like so. And I'm trying to use the side of the Sharpie. So my line is nice and wide and once I have that I'm going to do my cuts on the left and right of my sharpie mark because the lines are very close to each other then we'll heat this up that detail embedded in here okay and uh, if obviously you want to bring this over to the other side so what I would do is just turn your piece sideways continue your line straight across to the other side that way you know where it connects and you can make something that's fairly symmetrical on the other side of your piece or if you just bought the patterns uh, it's up to you if you want to transfer them over or not Okay, so that's for the big one. I'll do the other side after. I'll show you guys what we're doing for the smaller one. And those are the lines for the smaller one, obviously inside and out. So I'm gonna just fast forward through those steps. Catch you guys for the next. Okay, so now that I have all of my parts with the little details, we're gonna go ahead and glue these two pieces that we spoke about earlier. Again, it's gonna be completely up to you, uh, the angle at which you do this. So go ahead and glue these together as you see fit. Okay, so fairly simple. I already have my lines on here, so I'm just gonna take my time and show you this one. I'm gonna put it right up against the seam. Okay, grab my other one, make sure I'm not doing it too, too low. And I'm giving myself the same amount uh, for both. Okay, right there. And then just kind of force the foam to follow the foam on the other side, like so. When everything I'm sure is nice and equal, I'll go ahead and press down. Okay. What you want to do is you're not trying to glue this all the way you just want to leave this open here so right about where this curve starts here you kind of want to uh that should be your cutoff point of where this under piece is glued to the top piece unless you want to do it differently again it's completely up to you but that's the way that i am doing mines and another thing that you guys will notice is that i added these little circles uh in the middle of this here and all i did was uh, make some extra circles and I put some magnets in the middle of them. I don't know if you guys can tell here. Yep, you can see it kind of there. Yep, magnets there. Uh, because what I want to be able to do is to have these be removable. Uh, now, you don't have to do this. I tend to, to overbuild a lot and so 
Uh, I'm just doing this because in my mind it would make sense for transport purposes for these not to get you know bent or anything like that just to be able to take them off and transport this flat but uh, if you don't do this that's perfectly fine you can just glue this in place once everything is painted okay on to the All next right, so now back to these guys what you're gonna do is you can get yourself a three-quarter inch or one inch wooden dowel that you're gonna use for a handle and you're gonna figure out the middle of your piece you're gonna go ahead and make an impression I don't know if you guys can see I made an impression there and then once you figure out the middle of that you could use a sharp exacto blade to just cut out the hole or you can use your Dremel to plunge a hole for the dowel to go into okay so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out catch you guys for the next step see, yeah, and you do want to make sure that you cut out the hole smaller a little bit smaller than the actual diameter of your uh, handle is and then you can just kind of stick it in there and we're good we have a nice centered piece that we can hold All right. again this is a lot easier if you're using uh, a rotary tool that you can plunge and just kind of like eat away at the foam on the inside but there are always alternatives so the knife and some pliers work well to just pull out the foam after you've made your cuts if you guys opted to do the uh, lights inside of your piece, then it's gonna be a lot easier because you, you would have already had this hole here. Uh, if you opted not to do it, then you're just gonna do something similar to what we just did with the handle. So you can stick um, these little guys in there or whatever you choose to put in there as a replacement. You can also do the wooden dowels. Also. All right, so at this point with this piece, you can do one of two things. You can go ahead and glue this in place, okay? Making sure that these align and sit flush. So glue those flush with the bottom edge right there, all right? And then this piece will be complete. What I'm going to end up doing, because again, I like to overcomplicate things, I'm putting a hinge here and I'm gonna have a spring mechanism so when I pull on the bowstring this kind of does this motion here and then snaps back into place and I'll go into that later just wanted to show you guys this step at this point so that if you're not going to do something similar to that you can just glue this here at this point and that's perfectly fine if you are we'll visit uh, this stuff a little later okay so next up we're gonna put these parts together so with these pieces, what you want to do is you're going to grab the long one and you're going to align your piece at the bottom here, making sure that these parts are flush. And what you're going to notice is that it's going to leave a little bit of uh, an opening there, which is exactly how it should be. And then also on the inside here, uh, it's also open. There's going to be a channel there, right? So in order to do that, you just want to make sure that it's flush with the back part here and the bottom part here are flush here, okay? And that's pretty much it. You're going to glue those together like so. And once you have this done, you're going to grab one of these. This also has a little detail there. And you're going to put this kind of right in the middle of the piece here, like so, okay? so. This is the general look that you're going for. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through those steps and catch you guys for the next one. Okay, and that's how that one comes together. Now, if this is too floppy for your taste, you can grab one of these skewers from like Walmart, whatever the case may be, or any type of like solid piece and you can glue that in between that channel. That's what this is for, is to make the front rigid. So, so for this next piece, we're gonna bring out these guys. You should have two of these and two of these. Obviously, we're only working on one. It's a pair, so whatever we do to this one, you'll do to the next one. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put this down. This edge here needs to line up with this edge here, okay? So when you put it down, it should look like one continuous line on the inside here, okay? 
whatever excess is on the outside doesn't matter you're just going to squeegee it and glue it down anyways uh, when it comes to the final thing but what you want to do is place this piece right where this end is here like so and then you're going to try and center it as best you can and you're going to press the edges over on the other side at this point I can let go of this piece so I'm going to go ahead and press press the sides as hard as I can to just try and get somewhat of an impression on the inside okay and then when I take this apart you guys can see I kind of have an outline of where my fold needs to be and before the foam loses that position I'm gonna go ahead and quickly mark that with Sharpie okay so we've gone from a flat piece to something that has a slight bend and we have our lines here now now that we have our lines go ahead and grab a ruler and on the innermost part of your Sharpie mark so the, the side of your Sharpie mark that's closer to this middle line so like right here I'm gonna go ahead and place my ruler down and I'm going to score the foam okay you can tell I put a line down I'm gonna do the same on the other side okay you're not trying to go too deep okay and then on either side of this line that you just scored you're gonna grab your blade and you're gonna slice towards that middle line this is called doing a, uh, a trench cut slice towards it like that other side of the line slice towards it to meet with the other cut like so okay and once you've done that you should be able to remove this little triangular piece of foam that you see here now what that's going to allow is for us to bend this and glue it in place that way when we're done uh, painting everything because this is one of the last things that you're going to put on this piece when we're done painting it'll be a lot easier and way less messy for us to just put this down and glue it down because you don't want to have the glue mess up your paint too much okay you have a nice sharp line out here and if you got your measurements correctly it should fit just right on the top of this piece all right so do that twice and i'll catch you guys for the next time. okay i have my two pieces i'm gonna go ahead and bevel well not bevel but just kind of fade my ends down a little bit to a point like so same thing here i'll grab this piece so i know how far back i was when i started there we go okay Got it. Got it. and the reason i do this beveled cut is because I'm gonna glue this, these two pieces together and I want this to look just kind of like it's going into or coming out of this, all right? So a little detail that you don't have to do if you don't want to. With that said, again, remember to align the bottom of this with the inside of here. And you're just gonna kind of figure out, okay, where does this touch and start? And you're gonna put that up against your piece, grab it, mark it and you know that that's where you start to glue this onto the spine of that feather so i can take the other feather put it right next to it since it's symmetrical i just kind of extend that line and now i know where the glue at which is what i'm going to do right now. okay so once you've glued your part to the long feather okay go ahead and heat it up bend it a little bit so that it keeps the form and you're gonna put some glue in these trenches and then you're gonna seal it shut so that it holds this position while we paint and that it's easier to attach when everything is set and done. Okay, once you've given your contacts in enough time to dry, all you're gonna do is just press these up against each other and they just should stick. 
which is great because now it will hold this shape throughout our painting process. Almost forgot. Uh, before you go into the paint booth, at this point what you want to do is really start assembling your bow. Um, you don't have to do it completely, but at least these uh, five pieces, so the bottom bases, the guards, and your handle. And you want to hold it so that it is, make sure that it is straight. Um, once you have that, uh, you just want to decide which is going to be your top or your bottom. Uh, this piece belongs to the bottom and what you're going to do is slide this on the curve until it looks straight to you okay and so once you've found that it is straight hold it in that position um, or have someone hold it in that position for you and draw the outline of where it is uh, that way you'll know where to glue it and so what you can do if you plan on gluing it you can grab your exacto. you can score on the inside of your Sharpie lines just a little bit uh, and heat it up a little bit so that you get a visual, uh, even after you've painted, you get a visual of exactly where it is that it goes. Or what you can also do is this same uh, skewer sticks that we've been using, you can do maybe uh, one at the top, one at the bottom so that you have a registration so that you can plug it in or plug it out or you can just do one in the middle so that you can plug it in plug it out me being me uh, I'm just going to Dremel a hole inside of here put some magnets put another magnet on the end of there so that uh, it's removable but there are many different ways that you guys can go about it uh, but don't forget to do that and don't forget to do that for your front uh, little stem piece also this guy also points straight so slide it down, find a position that it works best, um, notate that position, drill a hole, or put something through it so that you can stick it into place once everything is said and done as far as painting is concerned. All right, okay, we're in the paint booth, we're ready. We're gonna Plasti Dip all of our parts. Plasti Dip, okay, we're gonna do about maybe two coats uh, on all of the parts, and then after that, we're just going to paint everything their appropriate colors. I'll have. Okay, all my parts are plasti dipped. As you can see, all the pieces are black, no more foam colors, nothing of the sort. Okay, so I'm going to do a grape on the main body parts. I'm going to do a shiny metallic silver on the gears uh, and the gear peg. I'm going to do flat soft iron on whatever this thing is, the blade pointing thingy. Uh, I'm also gonna use this reflective spray on the tip so you can have a shine to it when people take pictures. I'm going to do flat antique nickel on these guard thingies and a gold medal by Design Master on the long pieces and 24 karat pure gold on the shorter ones. Now you can paint these the same color, I just wanna add a little bit of dimensionality to it so and do put a light colored primer coat on your parts that are going to be uh, that purple or else it's going to take a lot of coats for you to get the actual color of the purple because you're putting it on a black base so if you put it on a lighter base uh, a light gray uh, um, a white or something like that the color is going to pop a little bit more once you put the top coat with the purple All right, now we're gonna go ahead and add some details to some of our parts here. So uh, these little guys, I'm gonna make blue, uh, and then I'm gonna paint some gray details on this race piece here. I'm gonna do a band right here. And I don't know if you, if you guys can tell, but I already started painting this part on the other side with a little bit of an iridescent paint, just to give it a little bit of contrast from this, this dark piece. And you can do that with any type of like metallic paints or anything like that. And again, I'll have links in the description. So I'm going to get going on this one and this one also on these stripes here. I'm going to use some reflective tape to kind of give it a little bit of contrast. And I'll fast forward through the steps to catch you guys for the next one. All right, and this is what we've got 
so far and what I'm going to do uh, on these parts right here I'm going to add these brass cap screws I mean I could have just done them like regular metal but I think the brass is a nicer contrast uh, yes and now uh, we're done with this piece okay if you guys hadn't seen these also got the little reflective tape treatment again you can paint this if you don't have any of that stuff or don't want to use it. and for these guys I'm also going to use a little bit of rub and buff on the edges just to kind of give it a little bit of weathering so super simple you just put a little bit of this on your finger rub it in between your fingers you can also do this with a, uh, a rag or a paper towel uh, depending on the results that you're trying to achieve so I'm gonna fast forward through those steps all right so now with our parts mostly painted I'm going to show you guys how I went from this to this fairly simple you're going to do this for both your arm bases and long arms my long arms are still drying right now but the process is going to be the same I'm going to grab a brush fine tip with some white paint or whatever paint you choose grab my brush and you want to dab this on fairly thick just so you can get into your crevices. So after I'm done with one uh, or a few, <laughs> I'm just gonna go ahead and moisten up a paper towel and I'm gonna wipe the paint off right away. You don't wanna give it time to dry at all uh, or else it's gonna affect your uh, the outside purple of your paint. So wipe it off immediately and then just move on to the next step until you have all of them done, all right? And as you're doing this, from time to time, switch out your paper, all right? So as you can see, I've already used four sheets here because um, you don't want to leave behind like white streaks as the paper gathers more and more paint. So you want to refresh your paper from time to time, grab a fresh sheet, wet it, and keep the process going, okay? Okay, and then this is what your piece should look like when you're done with everything. Remember to put some masking tape here and do some straight lines because these do connect with each other over the top here. And then uh, for the gold tip here, super easy. Uh, once this was painted and dried, I went in it and put some masking tape all up under the edges here, wrapped the rest of this with paper and just sprayed uh, the tip, the, uh, the gold color that I've been using for the other pieces that you see here all right so we'll set these aside for a sec and I'll show you guys how to do this part with the little light up piece here so, so uh, first thing I'm gonna do is basically make this about like a, a foot in length and just kind of uh, wrap the lights onto themselves like back and forth back and forth until I have this kind of length and then I'm gonna twist them onto each other like so all right so once I have that done uh, you want to kind of remember what your curve was inside of here which was kind of like this so you're gonna want to curve your wire in that general direction and just kind of shimmy your thing through there all right if you do that curve it should go in no problem and then you can pull this in slide your light in and then you have this all the way out here uh, so now what you're gonna do now that your light is protruded on the outside like this you're gonna go ahead and bring this through your tube okay and fold it a couple of times back and forth making sure that you're concentrating a bunch of your LEDs at the very tip there and just slide this back in into the tube. That way, um, once you attach this, you get like the maximum brightness out of your piece. So my lights are inserted. I'm gonna go ahead and just push that in um, until you feel that it doesn't push anymore. And that is pretty much it. You can... And then on, off. Super easy, all right? So, and also to take your piece out, just kind of pull, pull at your string, and then you can swap out your batteries, all that good stuff. 
Okay, all right, so next up, what we're gonna do is grab our short wings, and we're just gonna glue these in place uh, on the sides there, flush with the surface. And for this, you can just use uh, super glue. Uh, that's the cleanest way to do it. You can also do it with hot glue, although that's gonna create seams and you don't wanna mess up your pretty paint job. But um, however you guys want to go about it, uh, this is what I would suggest. That'll hold pretty nicely. Okay, and I'll just take my time with this last one just to get, give you guys a sense of what it is that I'm doing. I'm putting some glue, not too much, uh, just enough that I can see it on the surface. Uh, I'm focusing a little bit more on the outer edge so that I can um, fill the seam lines a little bit. Also, it's important to put a little bit on this last one here. And then, clearly you can barely tell that I even put glue on there, but this stuff sticks super, super well, so I don't need to worry about that. And then I'll start at the bottom here, making sure that uh, I'm aligned with the surface, the purple surface. Just kind of push the stuff into place, hold it there for five to 10 seconds, give the glue enough time to actually adhere. While you're doing this step, you know, and you're, you're holding behind, you're holding in front, make sure not to get any glue on your fingers uh, and transfer it on to your, uh, your final paint job because that will soak. Okay, so next up we're gonna glue this guy and uh, what you wanna do is just look down the line, make sure that it's aligned, make sure that you're putting it where it needs to be. Uh, if you have a way, you can probably use your nail to just kind of uh, score a little bit. Something visible so you know where your uh, glue is going to be. You can also do this with like a, a pencil, something that won't actually stain or mess up your paint job, but just kind of leave a mark. Okay, And then when you know where your lines are, you can put some some glue there and glue it down. Okay, So I'll do that step and catch you guys for the next one. Alright, and now we got that out of the way. Looking good, everything's glued. And you wanna make sure that this is just barely touching uh, or going in between these two, like so, okay? And now we're gonna add this piece. I haven't glued this in yet, but it's gonna be super easy. You're just gonna grab your um, middle axes, basically. I'm gonna put some glue on the surface. Make sure that you do the entirety of the surface and not just like a little blob, okay? because uh, this is gonna need to make really good contact. Give yourself enough room that you can hold it, so don't glue all the way up to the edge because you wanna be able to put your finger in there. And then you're going to pry these two open ever so slightly, okay? Slide your piece into place. I'm still keeping it pried open with my fingers, and then once I figured out my position here, I can just close these two, all right, and hold that in place. 15 20 seconds or until you're sure that your glue has cured and that's pretty much it i'm gonna fast forward through the other one catch you guys for the next all right that's that now we have a spinning gear okay so if uh when you were putting these you got like some creases on your piece or something like that you can just grab a heat gun and quickly relax the foam a little bit and that should take any creases that you had in the gold paint uh, out. You don't wanna do this for too long. Um, five, 10 seconds worth of constant moving heat and it should relax the foam and relax the paint on the surface so that you don't see any like uh, unsightly creases or anything like that. Okay, so we can move on to the handle. Uh, so what you guys want to do is cut yourself up a piece that is about nine inches um, this is really going to depend on how deep you actually made the hole in the bottom um, of the main piece here. So do try it out with everything on. So uh, let's say, for example, you had your parts completed. You want to assemble these back together how it is that they're going to be. Stick that in there and grab a piece that's long enough. Uh, put your hand there. Stick your thumb inside here to touch where the foam ends and just kind of drag that out. 
okay? And then whatever this measurement here is, you're gonna add that same amount here, and that'll be the amount that you cut, okay? So for everyone, it's gonna be slightly different depending on how much you actually dug through uh, for this. But as you can see, um, 11 to 13, I have almost about two inches, so that's really how deep you do wanna dig those holes for your handles, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this uh, and see how it fits. Go ahead and insert other end, and if I measured correctly, there should be just enough room for my fist to fit. All right, with that done, we can grab our assembled part and then we can put our bow arms. Now, uh, I did mention at some point that I was going to do the hinge mechanism here, which is why I didn't glue them together. At the end of the day, the hinges, the spring hinges that I had were just too weak. Um, when the bow stretched back like so, it didn't automatically bring it back up, which kind of defeated the purpose of having them. So I ended up just doing magnets on the inside so that I can still take it apart, but it is static for now. Okay, so put it two pieces. And if I can get this to fit in frame, we have a bow, um, but not without a string. So I'm gonna grab some elastic uh, band string. And what I'm gonna do is tie this off on the uh, on one of the holes of the gear uh, from the top here. Okay. Once I've done that, I'm just gonna use the gear to turn this around till it faces down now. So, and I'm going to measure enough string to do the same thing on the other side. So you're gonna measure from where you think the bottom hole is gonna be, so right about there. So I'll cut this off here. And when putting your second one, you want to, uh, if you have the opportunity to take your bow, uh, take your bow arm off, or if you glued these two together, just take it off here at the handle, okay, so that um, you don't have to pull and have too much tension going on while you're attaching this. So I'll fast forward through that step. And then we have our string. We can pull and pose and pretend like we're shooting arrows at the garage door. All right, that's pretty much it. The handle is still just like the raw wood, but you can do some pretty cool stuff uh, to decorate your handle. You can wrap it in leather, you can put some foam around it, uh, you can do all sorts of neat stuff. And um, that's completely up to you as far as how you'd like to customize that. I do believe that in game, the handle to this is orange. I do have some orange leather coming in that I'm going to uh, be putting some foam on this and wrapping it so that it's like super cushy and comfortable, but it didn't make it in time for me to post the tutorial, um, but that's a pretty simple process that I think you guys can figure out. Uh, our lights still work, All right? And uh, yeah, that's been it for this one, guys. I hope this one was useful. Hope you guys learned something. And if you guys have any questions or concerns, there's always the comment section down below. And that's pretty much it. This has been Cast from Giveaway Studios, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Cheers.